<clears throat> Hi, we're here at Keensburg, yeah. New Jersey. Uh, while driving, we spotted what appeared to be an old killie trap that we lost and a crab pot sitting helpless in the extreme low tide. So, of course, being absolutely nuts, I parked and went after it. I got the crab trap, but the tide was coming in really fast. Um, on my way to the crab pot, I got stuck. I sunk in to the mud to my knees and couldn't get out. So I had to pull my feet out of my new sneakers in order to get out. Uh, so we're pretty muddy, but we have a brand new crab uh, pot for free, which is just the way I like to get them. And now I need to go clean up my bloody foot because I cut it on something. And Zoe's feet are kind of muddy. So she had a great idea that she was going to come and try to help, but uh, it didn't work very well. And we're going to try to put this crab pot back together and use it this season. Here is the crab pot that I fished out of the ocean during low tide. It's pretty bent out of shape. Um, actually, it's terribly bent out of shape. It, it barely looks like a pot at all. But I'm going to try to fix it and see if I can make it worth something. I don't know. This is supposed to be flat. <laughs> it's not. So, here, here we go. How's that? Wonderful. We'll give it a try, see if we can make it do something. Hello, I'm here with my crab pot, which is in unbelievably bad shape. Um, my hope is to bend it and fix it, make it usable again, so I don't have to buy pot. Coming along, it's starting to actually look square. It's got a little bit of shape. Um, <clears throat> got the, the entrances kind of to form where the little crabs are going to work their way in, or the big, huge crabs, I wish. It's starting to get squared off. There's uh, four entrances on this puppy in there. Pretty good shape. I just gotta get them squared, you know, you know, shaped kind of nice, and make the entrances big so they can fall in there real good. So I getting spooked. Uh, this is the door. Um, this side had the crabs out when they get in there. Ah, these are all in there. And they, what they do is they go inside this hole after the bait. They freak out and they swim up. That's just the crabs do when they freak out. They swim up. So they swim up through a hole that's right here. You probably can't see it. There's a hole. <clears throat> they swim that hole and they get trapped in this upper compartment where they stay. And then when I get them out, I open this up and get the crabs out. Um, that's how it works. I'm going to keep carefully shaping this a little bit. And then uh, hose it down like crazy. Get all this dirt and mud off. And then. Uh, reinforce it however I can and then repaint it with probably a rubber coating paint um, or just a rust-oleum paint we'll see depends how it comes but I'm pretty convinced I can salvage it so I'll check back in with you in a bit
All right, there's the pot. Uh, I would have showed you more of the process, but it was actually very long and boring. Um, however, I got it pretty shaped. It's kind of square. All the parts work, the doors work, the entrances, the covers, etc. They're all in fairly reasonable form. And now I'm going to hose the hell out of it so it can be um, reinforced and painted. This is the, the pot. You can see the four entrances. When the crabs get in, they look like this. This metal bar right here, that's weight. It helps keep it down. Uh, this is where you open it to get the crab out. And on the bottom here, this slack opens up. And um, there's a hole in it, like a container almost, where you put the bait. So I'm going to hose it down and see how it cleans up. Bread and oven. Okay, so I let it dry for a bit, and then I came out here and took off the weight that sits in the bottom, so I can sand that down and then uh, paint it. And then I was able to go around the edge here and square it off and bend it, get the shape back to it. I uh, did pretty good. It looks okay. So what I'm doing now is using a wire brush and trying to brush off as much of the crud that I can using this guy right here and just brushing it off. Um, obviously a little more careful than this when I'm not taping. And then I'm going to just re-secure everything with zip ties, epoxy, rust-oleum, and hopefully it'll look pretty and clean and strong and I'll put that back on uh, and be ready to go. Here we have Deckhand Penny using a wire brush to scrape the crusty rust off of the weight. Brushing yeah. What are you doing? Why are you brushing it? Rusty, dirty, and dirty. All right, go for it. How's that, huh? It's hard work being this good, huh? <laughs> Here's Penny using the steel brush. She's going to demonstrate how to get the crud off. By going in one direction, it'll scrape all the stuff off of the bars on that inside. And then you go the other direction, and it'll take off the crud that's, you know, on the stuff on that side. So each direction you go will clean one side of the bars. So you get a good brush 
cross in all four directions, you should get those little round bars nice and clean. As you can see, Penny is a professional. Don't try this at home. <laughs> Hello, I'm out here with the pot still. I've been brushing it carefully in all directions and it's starting to look pretty good. Looks pretty good. Getting inside this has not been fun. I'm gonna get inside and, and get all the crud off of the inside pieces. Total pain in the neck, but I'm managing to do it. All right, after much cleaning yeah. and scraping, and more scraping, and more scraping, Time to rinse this thing off. Spray him, Penny. Wet me. <laughs> so Penny's only came out here to help me scrub down this tank. Uh, Penny and Zoe came out here to help me scrub down this pot a bit for like two seconds. But really what they want is to play with water. So there they are. Pot looks really good. Well, as you can see on camera, look. Look at that. Clean and green on the outside. Amazing. So here's a look at the pot. I painted it with purple enamel. Um, since I had purple and uh, well, it looks cool. It's clean uh, pretty good shape Now that the trap is in good shape and it's painted clean and together I'll just need to attach the weight a line a buoy, and it'll be ready for use. Now, what I'm gonna do is put the weight on. Basically a big square piece of rebar. I'm gonna put it right here. And I'm gonna attach it with my favorite thing, zip ties. This extra weight. This extra weight will keep the pot on the ground and keep it from floating away in the tide. So you don't lose your pot. Because losing your pot really stinks. And for many reasons, you never quite figure out the back of your pot is not there. So thanks for weight to it, I'll keep it, stay put. Attach it to a bunch of places because there's also that stress to it, and I don't want the little flimsy cage to attach it right and have the bar fall off. Zip ties are sharp, uh, and they can stab you and cut you and scratch you pretty good. So cut them real close so you don't leave any sharp edges. I'm using just a regular old toenail clipper, that works really good. Put one in each corner and one in the center of each side. That way stress is pretty 
evenly absorbed by the cage. And the, the, the pot is attached to the metal all around. Much less chance of the weight of the bar affecting or breaking the pot's cage in any way. Plus it's really not that heavy, but it's heavy enough. The pot is not the strongest thing in the world. Um, this does add a considerable amount of weight to it. Um, probably double, if not more than that. And there you have it. A square rebar attached by a zip tie to the bottom of the cage. Definitely helps it stay put. And the cage is done. Next I'll attach a line and a buoy, wrap it up, store it till fishing.